So we are here to celebrate National Read Aloud Day. So we have a very, very special guest that is going to read a wonderful book to you, and it is our very own Mayor Cahill. So big round of applause for him. Hey, how are you? Thank you, Mrs. Oliver. How are you? Good. Thanks for Good. being here. Hey, kids. Hi. So what grade are you, fifth? Oh my gosh, okay. So where's Joseph? Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. So what, am, am I to read now? Do we talk, you wanna say anything first? What are we talking? Well, um, does everyone, does yeah. someone guess what today was? Yeah. Sarah, what did you say? <laughs> the mayor's gonna read to us, but do you know why it's so important that the mayor's reading to us, Aaliyah? That's right, World Read Aloud Day. And that's a, this is a huge deal. It's a movement in the whole world. Do you know that? There are a lot of kids in the world today that are being read to and how important literacy is. So it, um, it's, a, it's a great thing and it's wonderful that you can all participate with us today. And how lucky are we to have the mayor here to read with for, to us, huh? Pretty incredible. So he's gonna read a very special book the author is um, Chris Van Allsburg, and he's also the same man who wrote the Polar Express. Yeah, and do you know he lives right here in Beverly? Yeah, he's pretty cool. And he and his wife were very important with what's going to ha take place after the mayor reads um, the book. So the book is called The Misadventures of Sweetie Pie, and you guys will really enjoy it. So here you go, Mr. Mayor. Thank, Thank you, you so Josie. Much. So you didn't know that the author, Christian Allsberg, lived in Beverly, the, the guy that wrote the Polar Express? Yeah. 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 And I'm really, I feel really lucky that I'm here because I was all shoveled out, and right as I was getting ready to drive over here, the plow came by and shoveled and plowed me back in. I had to shovel out twice. How many of you shoveled this morning? You're such good kids to help out. That's so good. All right, this book, how many of you have ever heard of The Misadventures of Sweetie Pie? Wow, some of you already have, some, have a few of you already read it? Well, don't give it away, okay? Don't give it away to me because I need to read this book with you for the first time. So, how are we gonna do this with this microphone? All right, this'll work. This book, well, we'll just jump right in. You ready? He is so cute, squealed the pigtailed girl. The hamster had heard these words before. He'd once shared his home with a dozen friends. One by one, they'd all been taken away. He'd been left behind because whenever a child had picked him up, he had squirmed and scratched. Nobody wants a hamster that squirms and scratches, do they? Actually, they're kind of fun. Today, he did not put up a fight. Wherever his friends had gone, he wanted to go there too. He left the pet shop and saw for the first time the great outdoors. It was filled with sunlight and endless blue sky with smells he'd never smelled and wind he'd never felt. In his new home, pigtails held him constantly, asking over and over, aren't you my little sweetie pie? Since it was the only time he was let out of his small cage, he pretended to like it. One afternoon, Sweetie Pie whoops, awoke to find that his cage had been moved. Something else rested in its place. Pigtail sat in front of it for hours at a time. The girl didn't ignore him completely, though. Each morning, she dropped extra large handfuls of food into his bowl. What had happened? The girl who was his owner, he calls her Pigtails, I guess. What had she gotten? So now she wasn't paying attention to him anymore, yes. Ooh, take a closer look. What do you see her looking at on the table? What is she looking at? Probably can't see it that well from here. <clears throat> what is she looking at? She's looking at a computer. She's too busy on her computer to play with her hamster. I know. But she gave him food, and because the food was so tasty and because he had nothing else to do, he ate every bite. 
Many days passed this way until Pigtails brought a friend to meet Sweetie Pie. Kind of big, isn't he, the boy asked? Holding an animal that felt more like a water balloon. Oh, what was going on with Sweetie Pie? He wasn't exercising and he was eating. What happened? Go ahead. He got a little big. Yeah. I think I'm going to put my glasses on. I can't hold this book far enough away. <laughs> okay. Yeah, agreed Pigtails. He eats too much, but he's lots of fun to play with. Is it a deal? The boy handed over a few wrinkled bills and picked up the cage. For the second time in his life, the hamster felt the wind in his fur and smelled the great outdoors. He breathed in deeply, but was back inside before he exhaled. What had just happened? Mm -hmm. Pigtails sold him to someone else. Hmm. And he, well, I don't know, maybe she just didn't find him that interesting anymore. Let's see what happens. The boy put the cage beside his bed and left the room. <clears throat> Sweetie Pie heard a loud sniffing sound. The cage began to shake, then it crashed to the floor. Sweetie Pie, his peanut-sized heart pounding wildly, dug out from under the wood chips and found himself facing a snarling dog. No, Buster, the boy ran back in the room. He just wants to be friends, he explained to Sweetie Pie, pulling the dog away. Really? Over the next few weeks, Buster came into the room again and again, knocking the cage to the floor and banging his wet black nose against the wire bars. It doesn't look very friendly. Hmm. Sweetie Pie was too nervous to eat, and he had bad dreams about mad dogs. He awoke from one of them when he felt his cage tilting again. This time it was the boy carrying him to the front porch. A car stopped in front of the house. A young girl got out and ran up the porch steps. Can I hold him? Can I hold him? Can I hold him? She asked. Cousin Sue clutched the hamster as if he were a fistful of candy. Then she carried him away. At home, Cousin Sue could not wait to play with her new pet. Oh no, look what she's doing. What, what is she doing? What's she doing to Sweetie Pie? She, she's dressing him up like a doll. She grabbed Sweetie Pie and yanked his bony paws through the sleeves of a pink dress. Aren't you pretty? Sue asked. Then she dropped him into the dollhouse. He spun like a top, making a terrible mess. That's not polite, she said, and tossed him back into his cage. Sweetie Pie spent the day chewing his way out of the dress. He had just finished when Cousin Sue returned. Look, I got a present for you. She twisted a plastic ball open, stuck Sweetie Pie inside, and ran outdoors. When Sue put the ball on the sidewalk, the nervous hamster clawed wildly. He shot along the sidewalk, picking up speed as he raced downhill. Hmm. If you were a hamster, how would you feel, oh my, about this? <coughs> there are no words on these pages, just some pictures and what's going on with Sweetie Pie? Yeah? What's going on? Can you see way back there? Let me have a little room right here. Let me just walk through and show everybody. Can you guys move just a little bit, little bit, little bit? A little bit, there you go. So, she put him inside this plastic round ball and what's happening to him? You can say it out loud, everyone. He's, he's rolling all over town. He's out of control. How many of you would like that? Well, if you were a hamster and you were in a little plastic ball and you were rolling down the street and there were cars and trucks driving by, would you still like it? Yeah. Okay, you're more adventurous than I am. Okay. Well, let's see what happens next. The ball landed Everybody back with me? Okay. The ball landed in a pile of leaves. Exhausted, Sweetie Pie waited for the girl to rescue him, but she never came. The sun set and the moon rose. The lonely hamster spent the night staring at the stars, wondering if he would ever get out of his plastic prison. In the morning, he saw children playing nearby. He pawed frantically and threw himself against the ball. Slowly, it began to tilt, then rolled off the pile of leaves 
Sweetie Pie steered himself toward the children. When the ball came to a stop at her feet, a little girl picked it up. Hmm. Look, she said, it is a hamster. I always wanted one of these, but my mom says no. She gazed at the hamster longingly. I'm keeping him. Okay. At home, she snuck Sweetie Pie into her room, opened the ball, and put him in a shoebox. When her mother called, she left. Sweetie Pie's nose began to twitch. The hungry hamster smelled food. He climbed out of the box and followed the scent to the kitchen where the girl sat eating. As he crossed the room, he heard a loud shriek. Then, bam! Something hit the kitchen floor behind him and a rush of air sent Sweetie Pie tumbling under the table. Does anybody know what that bam was? Yes. It's a broom. Well, let's see, what did the girl say? I've always wanted a hamster, but my mom said no. no. So she sneaks him into the house. Now, if Sweetie Pie hasn't had anything to eat for a day or so, and he's hungry. Next thing you know, he's in the kitchen, and what does the mother probably think? Probably think thinks he's a mouse or something. A rat? Ooh. Well, it's they are, they are rodents. This is true. Okay. Oh, look at this! A rat! The girl's mother yelled, raising her broom for another blow. The girl dropped to the floor to rescue Sweetie Pie and begged to keep him. Not in this house, her mother answered. The next day, the girl took Sweetie Pie to school, where he became the class pet. Each morning, a different group of children would feed him and play with him. But when, cl when class began, he went back into his cage. He spent the rest of the day watching the leaves fall and the squirrels running through the trees. Occasionally, one of the bushy-tailed animals came and sat on the windowsill. I had a question. Has Sweetie Pie had good owners so far? No. Not really. Who do you think is his best owner or owners have been so far? Who do you think? Yes. Probably being in the classroom so far. And even though the kids and the teacher have other things to do, at least they pay some attention to him, right? Yeah. The other kids that were his owners didn't seem like they were very good to him. So one of the bushy-tailed animals would come and sit on the windowsill. Do you know what a bushy-tailed animal that sits on a windowsill probably is? You see a lot of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A squirrel. Let's take a look. Could be chipmunks. Who has bushier tails, chipmunks or squirrels? Squirrels. Yeah, let's take a look. That kind of looks like a squirrel. <laughs> like a dog. The squirrel watched closely as the children opened and closed the cage. The hamster wondered if the squirrel was laughing at him. A silly little animal turned into a plaything for children. When holiday vacation began, hmm, Sweetie Pie left with a boy who had asked to take care of him. Uh-oh, not another one. On his way home, the boy stopped at the playground with his friends. The hamster wondered how long, oh thanks. <laughs> the hamster wondered how long the boys would play. He curled into a ball. He loved being outdoors, but was not used to the cold. When he finally looked around, Sweetie Pie saw that the boys had left. The boy forgot about him. And something strange was falling from the sky. Well, we know what that is. Yeah. yeah. We almost forgot what it looked like until a week ago, right? I know, but we hadn't seen it in almost a year. And then last week it came. How many of you took a snow day last week? Oh, you did too? I know, we heard all about it. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, it's on me. I got them started. So, kids, I would say this. I'm glad that we don't have a snow day on Read Aloud Day, World Read Aloud Day. So here we are. Before long, a blanket of white covered the wood chips in his cage. 
The sky got darker and the air grew colder. His teeth rattled and Sweetie Pie suddenly felt bone tired. He wished he could stop shaking. Ah. Soon his wish was granted. The hamster became still. His eyes closed and he fell into a deep and frigid sleep. After vacation, the children came back to school and saw the empty cage. The boy who had left Sweetie Pie at the playground described, with tears rolling down his cheeks, how he'd run back through the snow the next morning. He found the cage with its door open and no sign of the hamster. <clears throat> the teacher explained that someone must have rescued him. I'm sure, she said, a nice little boy or girl is taking care of him. The children knew better. Their forgetful classmate probably left the cage unlatched. The hamster had escaped and was now buried under a snowdrift, frozen as stiff as a popsicle. Ooh. A hamster cold. A hamster cold. Whoa. This made them. Now, come on, we're in the sad part of the book. You ready? This made them very sad, but not for long. The next week, a guinea pig one of the children received for Christmas moved into Sweetie Pie's old cage. Gone and forgotten. <laughs> By the time spring arrived, all the children except for one had forgotten about Sweetie Pie. The boy who had left him outside could not stop worrying that with the snow melted, the hamster's body would be discovered. During recess, he could not keep his eyes from searching beneath bushes and dried leaves where could Sweetie Pie be? Had the boy looked up instead of down, guess what? It's not sad. Good thing. Good thing. Okay. Had the boy looked up instead of down, he would have found the answer. High above the playground, a pair of squirrels moved quickly through the trees. They crawled into a leaf-filled hollow made warm by their friends who were nesting there. The squirrels cracked off pieces of acorn with their sharp teeth and shared their food with their small, tailless comrade. Comrade is just another word for friend. Well, what kind of a squirrel has no tail? An adopted hamster squirrel. Let's see, it was not as tasty as the food that he had had when he was younger, but looking out of the nest with his friends right behind him and the children 30 feet below, that's a good thing, <laughs> with no bars between him and the deep blue sky, Sweetie Pie felt like the luckiest squirrel in the tree. He's not a squirrel, but he was adopted by the squirrels, huh? Yeah. Thankfully, Sweetie Pie finally has a home How many of you felt badly for Sweetie Pie? Yeah. I don't, do you think the kids meant to be bad owners or were they just distracted with other things? Yeah. Maybe they weren't, maybe they weren't responsible enough to be pet owners, yeah. Well, that was a fun book. Mr. Marina, that's the best book I've read in at least a half hour. <laughs> well, I, I did read another book earlier to the kindergartners. I read my favorite book that I ever have, well, a lot of favorite books. Have you ever heard of the book, Ten Apples Up on Top? Yeah. By Dr. Seuss. Do you know that that was the first book I ever read to myself when I was learning how to read? So yeah, so I brought it and read it to the kindergartners. It was a lot of fun. How many of you like this book? How many of you would read it again on your own? How many of you have a younger brother or sister? Would you read it to them? How many of you would read this to how many of you would read this to an older brother and sister or your parent? Yeah? Well, I would I would bet that Mr. Van Osberg would be happy if you all got a copy of his book. This is a great one. Um, I think I'm good, Mrs. Marino. Hey kids, thank you. Thank you for listening and thank you for letting me be part of your world read aloud day. This is awesome. And thank you for being the best second grade in Cove School. Well, we have principals from the other elementary schools here, so I don't want to say too much. But you are awesome. Thank you.
So the second part of today's um, event is we have a presentation to make. Over here on the corner, we have four of the five elementary school principals um, here in Beverly. There's the principal from the um, Air School. Um, I know, I bet, I bet. Yeah, so that means that we're gonna have, um, be able to help a lot of your friends too with what's gonna happen next. We have the principal from the um, Ryle Side School. That's Ryle Side School. North Beverly and everyone in Centerville. And everyone knows Mrs. Oliver, right? She's our principal. And, um, and there's one more principal that was not able to make it here today, but from the Hannah School. That's right, that's right. And do you know that the five schools in Beverly all have libraries, just like we do here, and their students' moms and dads go in and help out too. So um, now this is how it all comes together. Chris Van Allsburg, who wrote the Polar Express, was a big part of a fundraiser that Luke Marino and I and a lot of our family in this community um, raised money for um, for books for these for the five elementary schools in Beverly. So I'm going to call Luke Marino up here. <laughs> Great. So um, at home, um, my husband Rich and I stress the importance of reading to Luke. But a home isn't just a house we live in. Um, it's also the community that we live in. So that is why we chose to support the community elementary schools, um, donating funds to purchase books for their libraries. Um, Luke never met his sister Isabella, um, that who um, the fundraiser was in her memory. Um, but she, um, in keeping with the memory, um, we are um, supporting her foundation, the Isabella Rose Marino Charitable Fund, fund um, supports different activities that Bella loved to do, and reading was her favorite. She loved to read. So um, Luke helped raise um, the funds, and on behalf of his sister Isabella's memory, Luke will be presenting a check, and this was Luke's idea. <laughs> you can go right in the front. A check for ten thousand five hundred dollars for the five elementary schools. <laughs> yeah. um, and he can present this check to uh, Mr. Mayor Cahill and um, the Assistant Superintendent Sue. If you'd like to come down. It's a copy of the real one. The real one is in a little envelope that's going to go home with the assistant superintendent. And, um, where are my hands? Purchase. So this money is going to purchase books. So when all you boys come in and you say, I want the Pokemon books and, and I want the Ninjago books and I th we're going to have more books here for you when you come in. And is that cool? This is all for you, all for you to enjoy. Yes, Sarah. He did, that's a very good question. He never met his sister because he was born after she passed away. So Luke never got to know her, but this is how he's having a connection with her now. And he's doing all these incredible things to, in her memory. And it's going to affect all of his friends and in this community. Yes, Clara. Isabella was four and a half. Yeah, but she was very, um, she, was, she was born very sick. Yes, yes, but 
But you know what? She was a happy, happy, happy little girl, and she loved going to school, and she loved books, and she loved doing all the same things that you all do. Great. So, thank you. Yes. Enjoy the books and keep reading. So now you can all go back to your classes and read. <laughs>